Chapter 6, Information Sources and Signals. So, some of the major topics we're covering is uh, sources, analog, digital, periodic, aperiodic, sine wave, half the love math, uh, time and frequency domain representations, bandwidth, baud rates per second, conversions, uh, bandwidth for digital, synchronous line coding, uh, all the way up to 6.20. Now, you have to remember that within our individual chapters, they're not always... We have certain objectives for each week. And so what I'm doing is I'm lecturing on each of the PowerPoints for the chapters that were assigned reading for each week. So I'm trying to do one set of slides that hit on the core topic, and then the required PowerPoints. So, uh, we're going to dive more into a greater detail for Datacom. Uh, after this chapter, you should be able to uh, at least have a basic understanding of what Datacom is. So, our communication system should be able to accept input from one or more sources and deliver it to specific destinations. Now, that could be done through a shared medium or a non-shared medium. So that basically one wire, we can all share it, or we can have individual connections. Realistically, we're talking about shared medias because we don't want to have a cable from our computer to every other computer, or from our phone to every other phone. It's just no longer realistic. We want one medium between us and everyone else, and we want to be able to share that one medium. So for using like the internet, for example, our source versus destination, our computer, and a web server. You want to go to Google. You go to your web browser, type google.com, hit enter. Our computer is the source. Google is the destination. Google actually returns to us the web page. So I mean, that's what we're talking about when we say information sources. So analog versus digital. So, what is the difference? One of the big things with analog is it's a never simulated size, or it's in a never simulated item, which means it's, you always know exactly what it is. Uh, think of an analog clock. As it goes around the clock face, you always know exactly what time it is, what second is, because there is no sampling. Uh, with digital, digital samples, they sample several times a second normally if not more, and it's a fixed set at that precise moment. So, it samples. Another way, another way to look at this is our analog and digital signals. Uh, normally our analog is not square, because again, it's never a realistic expectation. Uh, so we're looking at the very first between 0 and 1. Here, for our analog, 0 through 1, what uh, number is that? Is that a 1? Is it kind of going to a 1? In digital, it's either 1 or not. So within our sampling, we just set it to 1. Even though realistically, it's not, it didn't start out as a 1. It's kind of going to 1. But halfway through 1, it becomes 1. But I mean, on average, it's a 1. So, periodic versus aperiodic signaling. Uh, aperiodic is just the reverse of periodic. And that is a time interval over time. Uh, normally that doesn't repeat. Sine waves, everything within electronics, we deal with sine waves. You never get away from the math. Uh, it oscillates. What do I mean by oscillates? Goes up and down. That's what I mean by oscillate. Amplitude. If here is our common, our amplitude is actually the height of the wave. A frequency. Uh, one of the big things is our wave, our wavelength. Uh, 
So a wavelength is actually one wave before it starts repeating. Like here it starts repeating. So here's a wave. Here's another wave. Here's another wave. So, I'm sorry, I forgot to say frequency. Frequency is the number of oscillations per a given moment in time. So let's say we're looking between 0 and the third slash. It actually goes through one and a half uh, waves, so or one and a half oscillations. If we're looking at that time, if we're looking at the entire time bar, one to almost three uh, phases is another big one. Is how far from the start of the sine wave is shifted, reference in time. Like, we start going up, and then it shifts, so it goes back up. That could be a shift. So, frequency, amplitude, phase, wavelength. Those are our major ones. So, let's see this in a little bit better uh, graphical way. Our original sine wave assuming one second, two second. So let's say we want to increase our frequency. That becomes the next one. Notice here is still our one second, but we're now doing twice as much in one second. Let's say we want to lower the amplitude. Again, you notice the signal is no longer as strong, but we're actually able to do one in one second. What happens if we want to change the shift? Notice this is our original. It actually swaps it. It inverses it. So instead of going up, it goes down. They all have their functions. It just depends on what type of multiplexing and what type of characteristics for the media that we're looking at. So this helps build a nice solid foundation. So what do we, how do we measure this? We measure it in hertz. Normally a hertz is how many uh, waves per second. So here we're looking at if t is 0.5 seconds, 1 divided by t or time, we have 2 hertz per second. Because 1 divided by t, t is our time. Uh, T would be the amount of seconds it takes for a complete cycle to go through. And yeah. So what happens if we have lots of hertz? At what point does it go to megahertz or kilohertz or gigahertz or terahertz? So normally our frequency, it's all metric, so it's all base 10. So kilohertz or uh, hertz is our base and kilohertz for every thousand hertz for every thousand kilohertz it's a megahertz for every thousand megahertz it's a gigahertz for every thousand gigahertz it's a terahertz they're increasing by thousands so far we've been looking at pretty simple uh, signals those are just again simple now let's look at some composite those are complex signals. Here is our simple. Here's another representation of simple. Here is a composite signal. It doesn't quite follow a straight sine, sine wave. So it's a composite signal. Composite just means complex. You'll notice as it goes up, it may shift here for a second and go back down loop back around, shift again, and repeat. The importance of our composite signals is it's not always about a straight sine wave. We have to worry about modulating it and demodulating it. Uh, that way we can add additional data on it. So it's not just strictly a pure sine wave. So there have been several methods invented to represent a composite signal.
One of the big ones is our frequency domain, our time domain, our amplitude domain, and a few other types of domains that we'll get into when we talk about multiplexing. But the first one I want to th really talk about is our time and frequency. Our time, or frequency in hertz, and the actual amplitude. You start noticing this is more looking like a digital signal. And there we go. A time and frequency domain can also be represented as non-periodic signals. So that's just an item to throw out there for you guys to, to know. Bandwidth. So what is bandwidth? Bandwidth normally is the amount of data that a signal can carry, normally minus the overhead. So how do we look at the bandwidth of an analog signal? over a geary, uh, given period of time because analog fluctuates. How does that differ from digital? Digital does fluctuate but not as bad. Normally digital there's two states on off or zero and one. So it's on or off. There is no in the middle. Uh, here, if we start talking about 16 bits, you start seeing middle steps. That really isn't a middle step. It's a, a here we're representing a 1 as a plus 5. So here it's a plus 5 and plus a 0. So instead of doing like a half line halfway through a number, they just did it this way. So instead of it being plus 5, plus 5, plus 5, 0. They just kind of compromised and put it halfway. So the different levels of our numberings, it's just kind of depending on if, how many bits we're doing. Normally we don't do two bits like that, we do them individually. So it's more like this. Every number is calculated. We don't normally double step them like this. So bods and bits. How much data can be sent at a given time? Now remember, that's data and there's still overhead for sending it. So you have to make sure we think about that. The rate at which the data can be sent, it's reliant on how many signals, how much time, how much error, uh, how big of chunks, so it's not just one area. There are several that we have to think about. Uh, with our hardware, how fast can our hardware uh, send it? Uh, does both sides accept the measure of communication uh, over the time? How many times the signal changes per second is normally defined as a baud. So if the signal can change a thousand times a second, it's a thousand baud. Which we don't normally use the word baud anymore. Early communications, late 90s, early 2000s, they were very big with baud. Now, not so much. So how do we actually calculate it? And that is, bits per second is equal to how many bauds times log 2 of the number of levels. How many levels do we have? Let's say we have a thousand baud and we have four signal levels. A thousand baud times log two of four. I'm not going to do the calculation for you. This isn't math. I just wanted to show you that there is a math behind this and that there's the importance of having it there. So how do we convert analog to digital and digital to analog? That's a big one we do approximations. Here we have digital signal A and let's look at the same analog signal on B. They can represent the same signal but at the same time so can C and D. So 
there is some conversion loss when we convert digital to analog and analog to digital because they're approximations. I know that I skip, uh, skipped a few slides, but it was just getting kind of repetitive. Uh, one major one that I did want to discuss was analog to digital conversion because we talked about sampling before. So what we do is we sample an analog signal at a, a specific rate. It could be 30 times a second. And what we do is we quanti uh, quantify it. Then we encode it. That allows us to have our digital signal. That is sampling. Sampling is, again, looking at what the rate is at a given point in time. We quantify it, then we encode it. But how do we see that in a graphical representation? Here we go. At that given time, we rank it. That given time, we, we rank it. And we actually only look at those times. If we want a better representation, we sample more. The more that we sample, the better representation of the analog signal we get. We did the same thing with voice. We sample. The last one was, how do we sample a digitized voice call? So there is a representation. Normally, we're sampling it. How many samples times how many seconds uh, times 8,000? And that will be grouped by another multiplication of 8 times how many bits per sample. So if we are looking at 60 samples per second, so 60 samples every one second times there are 8 bits that we're sampling per sample. That would be 8 divided by 60. We could have our communication. There's just a lot of data there. Through cro uh, cross cancellation, we can actually just do 64,000 times 8 bits divided by however many seconds. And that's pretty much chapter 6 in a nutshell.